Okay, this is what we're going to talk about today. This is a, the Honeywell Fan and Limit. These are no longer used. Uh, I stopped using them probably in the early 1990s. But they're a heat-operated fan and limit switch. So they were uh, have a probe on them. The probe could be anywhere from 5 inches to 11 and a half, depending on the model. And it senses the temperature inside the heat exchanger. Now what I'm going to talk about on this today is wiring, how they are wired together. Now there's a couple of ways these things are wired together in the system because their sequence is supposed to be the burner comes on, it warms the heat exchanger up, this dial rotates as the temperature goes up, and it turns on the fan after a few minutes. Well, after probably a minute and a half, two minutes. And on this side, if it gets too hot, like the fan doesn't work or the filter's plugged, then this limit is going to shut the burner off. It'll leave the fan on, but the burner will shut off. Now, I'm going to show you how these things are wired. Because there's been, some people have been asking me about how they should be wired. And there's two ways that these things are generally wired. Now, when you look close, this thing has a wiring diagram on it. Now, this is, there's two spots right here to push wires in. These wires are actually just pushed in there. Uh, and there's two more spots up here that wires can be pushed in. On this side is for the fan. Now, you can see this wiring going up line down here, load up there, and there's a switch in between. It doesn't really show the switch on these things. On this side, it's the same thing for the limit switch. In very old furnaces, the way these things used to work is we would feed power in here to the bottom, and there's a jumper between the two, and I'm going to explain that in a minute, uh, so that there would be power on either side if I pushed in one pushed a wire in on one side. And if the limit shut off, it would shut off the 120 volts to the uh, control system of the furnace. It doesn't sh shut off the fan. The fan would continue to run. But power would come in here. It would go through this normally open switch to the fan. When the temperature comes up, then that uh, would close. And if it continues to go higher, and then this normally closed switch for the limit will open and it shuts off the 24 volt and the 120 volt power to the furnace downstream of the fan switch because the fan's still going to run. So these can be set up in that way with this jumper still in so that it can shut off the controls for the furnace on this side. So uh, 120 volt power would come in here and 120 volt power to the transformer that produces a 24 volt. The 120 volt power to the transformer is hooked up here. On this side, that power is coming in and the fan, the wire that goes to the fan motor is put here. The other way this is set up is you can have this limit in the 24 volt circuit. Again, I would have power coming in here, 120 volt power, but I would remove this jumper. Now this little flappy thing here, uh, it's kind of hard to see. If you pull that out or if uh, there's kind of a little copper jumper inside there, some of them you had to actually take a pair of needle nose and break off that jumper because you don't want the 120 volt feeding over into the 24. So you break that jumper, then you take your 24 volt circuit that goes to the gas valve and you interrupt it there. So I would have the power coming from say the thermostat would come to here and then the gas valve would be hooked up here. And so that would be in the line that would shut it down if there was an overheat. Now let's take a look at that in a schematic diagram. Here's my happy schematic. There's a rotating dial and the two switches. The jumper's right here. So if this was set up 
to shut off the 120 volt to the transformer in the furnace, then this jumper would be left intact. And the fan motor would be hooked up here and the power going to the transformer would be hooked up here. Notice this is normally closed, so it'll be closed until the temperature gets higher than it should be. And this is normally open, and so when the temperature in the heat exchanger gets up to where we want the fan to come on, this will close, turn on the fan. Continues to go up, then it'll shut off the limit. In some of these things, there was another little uh, connection point right here below the dial. It had two wires going to it. That was a preheater. I don't have one here that had a preheater on it to show you, but that was kind of a preheater to help the fan come on and stay on when it was uh, first starting up. That is no longer available. And the wires, there's two wires go there, you just take those wires off, isolate them, and uh, they're 24 volt wires, you isolate them and abandon that part of the switch because the newer switches just don't have that. It's a fairly simple switch once you understand the diagram that's on it, so you should be able to wire the thing up properly and make it work. That's it on this one.